why is it so many successful pilots fail to scale take zero? All right, so question number two, which was, what are the top three questions from the list of the top three questions the community's asked us to answer is, why is it so many ostensibly successful pilots fail when it comes time to scale, okay? The answer's a little complicated. Actually, in one way it isn't, but in another way it's actually really complicated. But at the end of the day, uh, it boils down to three things, and I'll lay them out here in a second. Understand the frame of reference most manufacturers are coming from when they initially try to digitally transform. If, if the fourth industrial revolution is all about the automation of business decisions, and the fifth industrial revolution, which started in with ChatGPT, is about the convergence of human and artificial intelligence, okay? And the third industrial revolution is, is about the automation of industrial processes. You have to understand that all the work that we've been doing with 4IR and 5IR, the automation of business decisions and the convergence of human and artificial intelligence, all those projects for most manufacturers, all of those initiatives are starting from the perspective of what their expectations are with the third industrial revolution. So when you're automating an industrial process, there is already a hardened process, procedure, and system for the process you're automating. So the, the process of going from raw material to finished good and manufacturing. The third industrial revolution is all about taking human hands, human decisions, human actions, and automating out the things that machines would be better at, would be more safer at doing, and more efficient, higher, um, higher quality output. Those processes are already hardened. Like when you write a functional specification for a third industrial revolution project, a three IR project, okay? When you write a sequence of operations and a control theory, an alarm theory, that isn't, Someone's not pulling that out of their butt. What they're doing is documenting something that's already tried and true. And so the details in successfully delivering on a three IR project have already been hashed out. All we have to do is effectively document them from a human centric human action process to one that we can code and automate using PLCs and embedded controllers. And the expectation is the, the success rate of those projects is really, really high. Very, very high. When you go from, hey, this is a manual process and we want to automate it, the likelihood that you can bring in even an average uh, systems integrator who specializes in controls, instrumentation and controls, their success rate is going to be 90% plus. Why? Because the process is hardened, okay? When we move to the fourth industrial revolution, when we, the stuff that we do in digital transformation, the industrial internet of things exists. The TCP IP, industrial networks, software, processors, that created the industrial internet of things. But the vast majority of organizations can't even quantify all the things they have in their business. It is not hardened. It is not documented. And the knowledge base is diasporatic. It is in many different silos across many different domains. When you're automating an industrial process, it is, you're inside of a silo, inside of one domain. It's not hard to get the experts who know the things you have to document into the same room. Very few manufacturers have a um, an expert in their organization who knows the details 
of all their domains. Very few. In fact, I can only, it's generally a really small manufacturer that has one set of back walls and one set of front walls. As you, as you get larger and larger in an organization and now M&A becomes a, a reality, so that is the number of manufacturing facilities and, and processes that they have in their business are, the vast majority of them were developed and, and designed and envisioned by other, other people, other organizations with different missions and values. It becomes even harder to find an expert who understands that domain. It's very easy to find people who can pretend they understand the domain. It's very, very, very rare to find the expert who does, in fact, understand the domain, the larger the organization. All right, so if you take that reality, if you take the reality of the, this diaspora of the knowledge base in, in Industry 4, okay, you take the fact that Basically, every manufacturer says the same thing. What they're good at is fighting fires. What they're bad at is predicting problems. And what's missing is the data and information they need to predict problems so that they don't have to fight fires. It, basically, every manufacturer says that. And so where, where do you start with your pilot? Well, you start with revealing current state. You're basically always starting in the same place. You're connecting to the data primarily process data where there is a domain expert because they've successfully gone from pilot to scale in automation. There are domain experts. You're collecting, connecting, collecting, and storing that data. And then you are modeling and analyzing it. And then you are visualizing it in a way where human beings can make decisions. It is very easy to build a successful pilot in that reality. The pilot's not the hard part. Fuck, if somebody screws up on the pilot, okay, there's no chance they know how to scale. None. Because delivering on a pilot isn't that hard. Okay, once you learn how to navigate people, okay, and, and assuming you are a domain expert. All right, that's number one. That's reason number one why successful pilots don't scale. The, that long answer in the beginning. Number two, every pilot has gaps, holes, the assumptions that are made, uh, solutions that aren't delivered on in the pilot phase that are reserved for the, when you're ready to scale, okay? And oftentimes though, the things that end up, I, I like to call them, they, they are the assumptions. Okay, they're the holes filled with assumptions. Most of the things that end up as a hole, a feature that wasn't built, but you kind of have a placeholder for it, and it's a feature that is that placeholder is sort of just resting on a series of assumptions. The data lives here, this thing's accessible, that API is open, whatever. Um, the things that end up there are the things that are too hard to do in a pilot, they're the hard things. Okay, they're not the things that you don't think are important. They are, they are not the things that are the path of least resistance. They are not the low hanging fruit. Okay, so the things that are left, the holes that you have there and the assumptions are, the assumptions are unreliable and the holes are big, much bigger than they look at the end of the pilot. Okay, and number three, why is it um, successful pilots seem to struggle to successfully scale is people. I would say probably the biggest mistake you see industry four professionals and now, but the, the biggest mistake industry four professionals make, I'll come right to it in a second. It's the third reason that pilots don't scale. The biggest mistake that industry five professionals make, that is all the people who are jumping into AI and it's kind of like, that's what they're leading with. The biggest mistake they're making is they are pandering to the customer who says the promise of AI is to reduce headcount. And so they want to take artificial intelligence to re replace people rather than using AI to augment people. 
Okay, that's the biggest mistake the five IR professional is making, okay? And the vast majority, the vast majority of people, and when I say vast majority, 95% plus, in my professional opinion, of the people who are talking AI on LinkedIn and on YouTube and, you know, in our industry are full of shit, are just full of shit. And they're gonna cash grab and they're gonna get some money, they're gonna make some money selling promises but they're not gonna deliver. If, because what they're selling is AI uh, to reduce headcount rather than AI to improve people, to capture, to make ordinary people amazing people, to make amazing people super people, okay? That's the number one mistake they're making. The mistake that the four IR professionals make that lead to successful pilots not successfully scaling is they build things that make operators' jobs harder. They, they build things that make anyone's job harder. If you, if, if you are creating more work, so first off, if you are building something someone didn't ask for, now you don't have to, people don't have to explicitly ask for things, but what you build has to solve a problem they actually have. Okay, every feature must solve a problem that uh, someone in the organization, someone critical in the organization, actually has. You are solving frontline problems in service of solving business problems, okay? If you are building something that doesn't actually solve someone's problem, whether they indirectly or directly didn't ask for it, you're the problem. That is one major issue in our industry, okay? You want to know oftentimes how that happens? The, the point of contact, the product owner, the person you're working with is asking you to build something no one needs. And it is your job to Socratically walk them through the conclusion, well, okay, what problem does this solve? Who has the problem? And who said they have the problem? Okay, if you're not walking through that process with your client, your client may have pulled a feature out of their butt. They may have Googled it. They may have heard somebody at a conference mention it. Their, their business may not have that problem. There may be no one in the organization who has that problem. Number two, if you make someone else's job harder to solve their problem, you fucking failed. So in the beginning, you have to have as few complaints about the solution you implemented as humanly possible. It's very easy to do that during the pilot because you're A, you're develop, you're doing low hanging fruit, you're doing connect, collect, store, analyze, visualize, which it's hard, but it's not the hardest part of digital transformation. Plugging into digital supply chain is, but find patterns, report, and solve is the second hardest part. All right, you're not starting in find patterns, report, and solve. Go look at all the ML and AI pilots and how, what the success rate is there. It's really fucking low, man. But pilot success is very, very high in industry four as long as you limit it to you know, displaying current state. So the third reason is, is that you have integrators out there who are making people's jobs harder or they're building shit that no one needs. They're solving problems no one has. That's why. So what are the solutions? What are the solutions? Well, number one, digital transformation starts with education, okay? You, the first thing you have to do is educate yourself about the client you're working with. And whether you're the integrator working with the end user or whether the end user working with the end user, okay? Whether you're the digital transformation professional inside of an organization, your customer is still the business, all right? You have to learn as much as you can about what your business knows. Okay, you, gotta, you have to take inventory. You have to take inventory of assets, of things, of strategy, of people, right? That's number one. The second step is you gotta educate the customer. You have to educate the customer so that you can set what their, their reasonable expectations, all right? That's number one. That's how you overcome number one, all right? Or how you overcome number one. Number two, how do you overcome number two? Well. You talk a lot about the holes. You talk a lot about the assumptions, okay? You 
it is about managing expectations. You talk a lot about the 80-20 rule. You talk about managing, you have to manage expectations with the end user. Okay, that number two. Like, hey, scale's not fucking easy. It's hard as hell. Okay, there's, there are, our goal in the pilot is to show the art of the possible, learn as much as we can about the business and the infrastructure, and um, demonstrate the art of the possible, and try to identify as many holes in our pilot as we possibly can, and let's list those during the um, release review, okay? And number three, how do you overcome number three? Well, you have to be absolutely committed. I'm speaking at HiveMQ next week, and one of my speeches that I'm giving is about the aggressive pursuit of positive customer outcomes. As an engineer, as a problem solver, as a, an integrator, you must aggressively pursue positive customer outcomes. Your mindset cannot be, I wanna survive this project, I wanna get through this with getting yelled at as little as possible. I don't really care if, you know, there's a PO here, I just gotta make sure we don't get fired until the end of the PO is exhausted. Your mindset has gotta be that you absolutely have to care about positive customer outcomes. And you, those of you who own integrators, you need to be um, interviewing for, recruiting and retaining the people who actually, absolutely aggressively pursue positive customer outcomes. All right, so if you wanna know why is it we, you know, successful pilots fail to scale so often, Number one, it's a function of the expectation set, the prism through which the end user is looking. That's been set by industry three, okay? It's a function of that. Number two, there's a lot of holes and assumptions in a pilot that people don't highlight, that rear their nasty little head when you go to scale. <clears throat> and number three, there is a lot of shit that gets built during pilots that looks impressive that doesn't solve anyone's problems, or even worse, makes their job harder. And the solution to that is to aggressively pursue positive customer outcomes. All right, with that, like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.